Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about the importance of never letting the opinions of others dictate how you feel about yourself. The truth is, we all have a time in our lives when someone's negative opinion of us hurt our feelings and caused us to perceive ourselves and our talents differently. Maybe it was that teacher that said math wasn't your greatest subject, or it was that overly critical friend who talked you out of your career goals and told you it wasn't realistic. Whatever the circumstances was for you, it's natural to take the opinions of people we love and respect to heart. Quite often, we even internalize the opinions of strangers. I'm here to tell you today that if you're confident in your talents and beliefs, don't let anyone talk you out of it. Sometimes only we know deep down in our hearts what's truly best for us. We live in a world that wants us to be ideal, whether that's getting a conventional job, getting married at a certain age, or being the ideal weight. At the end of the day, the way you feel about yourself is the most important opinion that will ever matter because it's your life to live. Internalizing the opinions of others steers us off course and further from the path that we are meant to live. As Steve Jobs quotes, don't let the opinions of others drown out your own inner voice. Stay tuned, coming up after the break, and I know that both of you are part of the book, Decoding the Wellness Mantra. So what do you both offer in the book? We're co-authors, so that meant that a beautiful collaboration of women that are interested in uh, allied health, natural health, health, health alternatives have all come together to be able to basically infuse their own amazing spark into this book. So you kind of get the best of all of us. So for me, it, it, there's a beautiful collaboration that's happened. Um, a lot of inspiring, empowering women that have really shown their genius, their epicness, their just their what their life passion really is. And so being part of the book has been amazing. Wardrobe provided by H&M. Next on the show, we have Anna Maya Ananda and Dr. Kim Brown, who are the co-authors of the book, Decoding the Wellness Mantra. Anna Maya and Dr. Kim, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you both doing? Amazing. <laughs> yeah, really good, thank you. Well, thank you for being on the show today. So let's start off by telling our viewers a little bit about what you both do. So we'll start off with you, uh, Dr. Kim. Yeah, well, I am an osteopath by trade, so manual therapist, and uh, more passionately, I'm an NLP trainer, so I specialize in neuro-linguistic programming, working with the unconscious mind to make changes for the future. Mm -hmm. And Anna Maya? Yeah, so I support all things that are high vibe. Uh, I work specifically with frequency therapy, but anything that's high vibe um, is really the core of all the things that I promote and do. And I know that both of you are part of the book, Decoding the Wellness Mantra. So what do you both offer in the book? Yeah, so we're co-authors. So that meant that a beautiful collaboration of women that are interested in uh, allied health, natural health, health, health alternatives have all come together to be able to basically infuse their own amazing spark into this book. So you kind of get the best of all of us. And I think that's what's really uh, you know, amazing for us to all be able to put a piece into this book. Yeah, I agree. And so for me, it, it, there's a beautiful collaboration that's happened. Um, a lot of inspiring, empowering women that have really shown their genius, their epicness, their just their what their life passion really is. And so being part of the book has been amazing and super excited to be here with obviously uh, Dr. Kim, but the rest of the authors as well as we, you know, take our you know, therapies or the different modalities to the world as options for wellness. Mm -hmm. And Anna Maya, what I love about your line of work is that you tap into frequencies, which is very interesting. So, you know, how do we tap into a frequency that motivates and inspires us? Sure. So frequency is really at the core of everything. When you think about 
the universe, whether it's something that's um, physical or non-physical, everything has a vibration and a frequency as part of it. And so being able to understand where you're at, being able to scan it and then also customize specific frequencies to yourself to be able to elevate yourself and bring you to a higher state of consciousness or just a higher emotion, um, obviously using frequencies to support that um, is really powerful. And obviously that was the heart of why I've, yeah, embraced, you know, all things frequency over the last specifically 14 months. Mm -hmm. And how did you tap into this line of work? Uh, to be honest, I, I got made redundant through the whole global situation that we're facing at the moment. And it was just the thing that crossed my path the day I actually finished up. Um, and I was looking at it for, I guess, the the effect that it would give me, not necessarily the sharing of that to the world. Um, but Obviously, with everything that was happening as a single mom, I was like, okay, cool, maybe I just need to run with this. And I did, and I've absolutely uh, embraced every aspect of taking this particular um, modality or therapy to the world because I see the powerful impact that it has on individuals. Um, and that's also why I created an interview series, to be able to share people's real life stories of how much it's making a difference really day to day with people that are going through all sorts of stress, emotionally, physically, mentally, spiritually, financially, it has an ability to be able to shift you out of what's ever causing you a, as a block or, you know, disease or whatever it is to be able to get you out of that place and into flow and into possibility of a better version of life. Very interesting. And Dr. Kim, you specialize in NLP, uh, Neuro Linguistic Programming, which I, it's very interesting. So talk to us about, you know, how did you get into this line of work and how do you help your clients kind of get rid of blocks? Because everyone has some sort of blockage that is holding them back or some belief. So how do you help your clients get past that? Yeah, well, ultimately I got into Neuro Linguistic Programming quite a few years ago now because I had procrastination and ultimately procrastination is not generally caused by laziness. It's caused by the fact that there is something underlying that, something internal, something unconscious. And it's often a belief of I'm not good enough or I'm not worthy or people won't believe me. And it's any one of those underlying unconscious beliefs that holds us back from doing what it is we want to do. Now, in my work as an osteopath, I noticed a significant link between physical, metaphysical, financial, and emotional pain. And they don't teach you this stuff at uni. They only teach you the physical and a little bit of psychological. But you see, all of dis-ease comes from the metaphysical, it comes from the emotional, and it absolutely comes from the financial link to problems and to stuff you're holding on to from the past. So it's been absolutely fascinating to uh, be able to work out the link between the emotional and the financial to the physical stuff. It's, yeah, blows my mind. <laughs> very, very interesting. I'm actually very familiar with both topics because I read a lot of books, a lot of self-improvement books. So <laughs> I'm very familiar with, with both of your line of work. Um, I wanna talk about what kind of improvements have you seen uh, in your clients with your coaching? Uh, let's start with you, um, Amaya. Yeah, so <clears throat> I, I help people get into uh, their personal power. I help people work through whatever is holding them back to really step into that power. And then beyond that, um, really as part of the up leveling of their life, whether they want to you know, change something in their life, whether it's personally, professionally, all those types of things. Um, specifically, I support people that are really, really ready to that uh, to go to that next level of themselves and through the frequencies and coaching and all that sort of stuff applied through that process. Um, that's really the core of what I do. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Kim, what kind of improvements have you seen in your clients? For a lot of people, they've lost significant amount of physical pain. So literally letting go of 20, 30, 40 years of hip pain, back pain, neck pain, which has all been caused by either emotional or financial stress. So it's a profound shift when people can put down that backpack that they're carrying around. If you imagine an emotional backpack that you've been carrying around for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, and how heavy that backpack gets by the time you're 30 or 40 or 50, 
being able to help people literally let it go emotionally, which also means that they let it go neurologically. So stripping away those negative emotions and limiting beliefs from the nervous system. It's absolutely profound. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, I feel like dis-ease comes from dis-ease in the body, you know, something, you know, it, it starts with your mind. If something's troubling you or uh, there are people that think they're sick <laughs> and they're not, but it really comes from maybe that, you know, they're not living their full potential. So how do you help people kind of live their full potential and get rid of those blocks? Firstly, we take away the label. A lot of people have been diagnosed with something and it may not even be true. They may not even have the backup, uh, whether it be a blood test or x-rays or any of those sort of things that diagnose them and effectively label them to a condition that they may then try and live out simply because a, a doctor or person of authority has given them that title. So we remove the title and let them know that they can actually choose whatever they want to believe about themselves ongoing. And if you choose to believe I am worthy, I am strong, I am capable, I can do whatever I want, words have power and they will either empower you or disempower you. So ultimately you get to choose whether you take the path of success and embrace who you were born to be. The fact that you're even on this planet is a miracle in itself. So if you embrace that miracle and step into your true power, you can create whatever you want. But most people are so disempowered because they believe they're not worthy, they're not strong enough, they're not fit enough, they're not smart enough, they're not skinny enough, they're not whatever it is, and they hold themselves back because they're so busy worried of having a fear of judgment or fear of failure. Mm -hmm. I completely agree with that. Um, you know, it all starts in the mind. Even for me, when I start my day, I have affirmations that I say that make me feel good. I used to do the generic ones, but I've now custom, you know, uh, made them to make me feel good. I'm now when I read them, I feel good. And if I don't start my day with my affirmations, um, I see a huge change in my day and my attitude, but if I say them in the morning, I feel good and nothing really throws me off track. So I think words definitely do have power. And Anamaya, you know, with everything negative that's happening in the world with COVID, most people are on a negative frequency. They're home, they're working, you know, they're not happy. Let's, let's be honest. <laughs> not everyone's happy right now with what's going on in the world. So how do we tap into, especially watching the news 24 seven. So how do we tap into that? positive, uh, vibrant energy that, you know, everyone wants to feel right now? Well, I think you need to work through the different, part of it is there's a lot of uncertainty that's going on in the world at the moment. We don't know how long we're in the situations we're in. So I guess from, from my perspective, it comes back to the self-care, the mindset work on a daily basis, working with somebody and aligning with somebody that can help shift some of the things that are holding you back. Um, and finding the good in what's out there. I've had some massive blessings over the last year, despite all that's been going on. I have a lot of clear boundaries around what I will watch, what I will experience, who I hang out with, what I tune into. Um, and so I guess it's limiting exposure to some of the things that don't make us feel good um, because too much of that can kind of make us feel low too long. And so I, I, I I strongly recommend to many people to limit what you expose yourself to, expose yourself to something that's positive every single day and working on your mindset and how you're showing up despite everything that's going on. How do you stay grounded and positive and, you know, able to, you know, still live out the things that you want to be doing in the world, um, knowing that all the other stuff is happening. Um, I try and tune out of a lot of that stuff. I, I obviously want to know what's going on, but mm -hmm. not to the point that it makes me feel bad about myself and my life and, you know, where things could or couldn't be heading. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And Dr. Kim, I know that you specialize in hypnosis. So how do you reprogram your clients' minds and program them for success? So hypnosis taps straight into the unconscious mind. The unconscious mind is the part of our brain that basically runs our body. You don't need to remember to beat your heart. Your heart does that because the unconscious mind is running the body. So we already trust our unconscious mind to keep us going. Where, with hypnosis, we get to go straight into that part of the brain and change what it is we think about, how we feel, the memories, the habits, the behaviors, all of that stuff that is ultimately pre-programmed into us. And you get to choose what it is you prefer to believe 
what it is you prefer to think and literally change so it becomes empowering rather than disempowering. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I want to take it back to UpSelf. How did you guys get involved in this movement and how would you encourage our viewers to get involved? Anna Maya, let's start with you. <laughs> okay, so we have our launch of our book going on. We've got um, <clears throat> obviously links that you can find that with. We've got a movement as well as that. Um, for me personally, and I think all those that are involved, they know the importance of self-care. They know the importance of taking care of ourselves before we show up to others. Because if, you know, if our cup's not full, if we're not nourished, if we're not sort of working on ourselves emotionally, mentally, physically, to be able to then, you know, give back out into the world um so yeah it's the priority around that and obviously people can come on board with that movement come and share in you know the collective priority around that especially obviously given what's going on at the moment even more of an emphasis is there um but yeah obviously we've got the book launches that are happening um at least at the moment in australia then we'll move when we can to obviously international um and then we've got our facebook community that can become part of so that they can be part of a really sacred container of you know, working on ourselves on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And Dr. Kim, how would you encourage our viewers to get involved with UpSelf? Well, ultimately, each of the co-authors of, of this have uh, links within their own bios and things like that. So that way you can really get involved. Uh, we are the captain of our own ship. And if generally, if the captain goes down, the ship goes down. So it's about creating this community awareness movement of being able to do self-care self-love self-acceptance self-appreciation so ultimately just being part of this beautiful community that are like-minded high vibe and want the best for ourselves so we can in turn create that ripple effect to help others mm -hmm. Yeah, and I've read some of the reviews and people are really inspired and loving it. So you guys are definitely <laughs> doing something right. You guys are both in a really feel good and important field that I think people really need. It's kind of unconventional, you know, it's new. So I wanna talk about what has been the biggest milestone in your career so far? Let's start with you, Dr. Kim. Well, milestone, <sighs> appreciating that we get to shift and change. And knowing that just because you studied one area of life doesn't mean you need to stay there if it doesn't resonate with you permanently. So I spent five years at university to become an osteopath, yet most of my work is done within the NLP, timeline therapy and hypnosis. So I actually feel like my biggest milestone is appreciating that just because you started in one direction doesn't mean you need to continue if it doesn't resonate, regardless of the degree you've got and regardless of the investment you, you got uh, or did to be able to get into that space. We always get to be able to shift and turn. We get to pivot and appreciating and recognizing that pivot, I think is the biggest milestone in anyone's life rather than staying on a path that was gonna keep you unhappy. Mm -hmm. Yep, that, that's very true. And sometimes it's hard to make that jump. Even if you are unhappy, it's hard to make that jump and, you know, try something something new. And, and Anna Maya, what about you? Uh, what's been one of the biggest milestones in your career so far? Yes, I've had a lot of success in sporting. I've had a lot of success in academic and then also in career, but probably from more of a personal perspective and really for what I want to stand for, I would say the last year of being able to take frequency to a global stage, a global audience. I've got beautiful connections where I've inspired and impacted people from really many parts of the world and being able to do that remotely, especially what's been um, going on. But probably some of the highlights have been my interview series that have reached you know, over 60,000 people just organically through Facebook um, and being able to also yeah, just share frequencies and the impact of frequencies um, to my online communities. I lead a couple of online communities, uh, growing communities uh, through Facebook. Um, so they're some of the main things for me over the last year that I've been, I guess, a high because I've always wanted to be part of something that allowed community, connection, impact, natural, alternative, all those things coming together um, and so blessed to have met so many amazing people of like-minded souls looking for the same thing for themselves and for others along this journey. That's probably for me being the biggest blessing is the connections and the community that brings along the way. Mm -hmm. 
Absolutely. And even though you guys are professionals, I mean, everybody has some mental block or something holding them back. So, Dr. Kim, what is something maybe during this pandemic that was holding you back or some mental block that you had and how did you get through it? Yeah, I initially when when all the lockdowns started and when life as I knew it got changed because I'm a hands on therapist and I'm a face to face trainer. Mm -hmm. So absolutely everything that I have invested my time, my energy and grown my company to be part of got taken away and it got taken away in a heartbeat. And even when I returned to university years ago, I thought healthcare was a safe bet. So I had to shift and pivot and put everything online. Now for someone who's hands on and face to face, that was a massive pivot. The turning point was simple, do or die. Which way do I want to do this? And it was just literally a mindset shift to be able to go, well, I can sit here and wallow and I can stay in my pity party or I can impact the globe, which is something I've always wanted to do. And it's been the best blessing because my events prior to that were literally face to face with people in my own state or interstate. And now I get to impact the globe. I've had students from the UK, from New Zealand, from America, from Canada, you name it. This is what's opened up for us mm -hmm. all because of an event that's happened around the world and a mindset shift that enabled me be, to be able to see that as potential, not a restriction. I love that. I got some chills when you said that because <laughs> it resonated with me as well. And Anamaya, how about you? What are some blocks that you maybe faced during this pandemic and how did you get through it? A similar situation where the world as I knew it, I was a, a general manager running a large organization, not for profit organization here in Melbourne. And then within two weeks, I had no job, single mom. How am I going to survive, support, not knowing how long certain things were going to play out for? Do I go and try and get a job? What am I going to do? So for me, it was around the fear and the uncertainty of where my life was actually going. And so I just had to do a similar thing. I just jumped into the opportunity that presented itself and had to run with it. I had no choice but to run with it from both impact, yes, but also from livelihood, uh, knowing that, you know, I've got to show up. I've got to show up in some capacity. So whether it's coaching, whether it's sharing frequencies with the world or whatever it is, I just had to get over whatever was going to hold me back and just step and run and run with it. And really that's been my year, but a lot of doubts along the way. Am I really, you know, we go into periods of sabotage or do I really want this for myself? Or, you know, we, we for me, part of having my own um, business has always come with hustle and hard work. I came from a very hard working father. And so some of that stuff was instilled in me where it had to be seven days a week all the time. And I had to shift my mindset and my just my time around what I was prepared to put boundaries around, especially as a single mum with kids to homeschool and all the other complexities of the last year. Um, but yet yeah, learning about myself through that process and shifting rapidly into a different environment that I had not been used to. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think we've all learned something about ourselves <laughs> during this pandemic. Uh, you know, there's there's been so many challenges, but I think it's really forced people to grow and to discover new talents, new hobbies, and maybe take them on a different path like it's have it has for both of you. Uh, how can people connect with both of you on social media and learn more about your services? Let's start with you, Dr. Kim. Sure. So Facebook, Dr. Kim Brown, really quite simple. Uh, I do like using that as a medium. I think it's really uh, easy to find, easy to use. Uh, I am on Instagram, Dr. Kim Brown. It's all, at all pretty much Dr. Kim Brown wherever you look. So easy to find. Mm -hmm. And Amaya? Yeah, same with me. If you look at, if you search on Facebook, Instagram, Anamaya, there's not many of us around. So um, yeah, just type in I am Anamaya or just Anamaya across the socials and you'll you'll pretty much get me and yeah, feel free to connect, reach out, happy to have a conversation or just, you know, share, you know, where people are at. Um, happy to give any guidance if, if needed. Awesome. Well, thank you both for being on the show today. It's been very enlightening. And I think you guys are both doing such amazing work that's so needed in the world. So continue inspiring, um, not just women, but everyone in the world. I, I think it's great work you guys are doing. So thank you for being on the show and we hope to have you soon. Thank, Thank you. you. I feel really blessed to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you.
Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook.